like this show and want to make your own, let me tell you about Anchor. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episode. The possibilities are endless for what you can create, whether it's music analysis, your own radio show, or something the world's never heard before. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, you are listening to Got Clutter? Get Organized, the podcast that focuses on helping you create space to attract more money, love, and happiness in your life. I am your host, Janet M. Taylor, and I want to say hello if you're a regular listener, and welcome if you're listening for the very first time. I hope you're having a great week. And of course, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, please leave a review so I can continue bringing you episodes each week. In this episode, Dr. Angela Chester will be joining me to discuss the importance of self-care. I will also be sharing my product, app, repurpose, and book suggestion for this week. (coughs) Excuse me. And my question for you this week is, when was the last time self-care was on your schedule? I can actually say it's on my schedule regularly for once a month. So what about you? So did you know it can include physical activities such as exercise, dance, and yoga, as well as relaxing outlets such as reading or taking a warm bath. And I am talking about self-care, which is why, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted Dr. Angela Chester, who is a pastoral counselor in private practice with offices in Los Beach, California, author, cancer survivor, and host of Daily Spark with Dr. Angela Radio and Daily Spark TV. She has built a career spanning more than 20 years and hundreds and thousands of people counseled. Dr. Chester has also served as an associate pastor and has built a reputation as a thought leader on issues related to motivation and Christian empowerment as an international motivational speaker. Dr. Chester also serves on the advisory board of the National Interfaith Council and is a member of the International Society of Mental Health, the Global Christian Professional Women's Association, and the International Women's Leadership Association. Dr. Chester holds degrees in pastoral counseling, psychology, and divinity. She is also the author of numerous books, including the best-selling Before You Tie the Knot, a premarital counseling workbook for the DIY couple. She is the podcast host of I Do Radio on Blog Talk Radio, Modern Living with Dr. Angela on iHeartRadio, and Daily Spark with Dr. Angela on WDJY 99.1 FM Atlanta Metro. WMTA 107.3 FM and 13.80 AM Central City, Kansas. WMTA 101.2 FM Cincinnati Metro and Radio Fairfax in the D.C. Metro area. She is the host of Daily Spark TV that airs on Preach the Word Network and in Roanoke. And she's also um, a part of Daily Motion as well. So sit back, you may want to take some notes on my conversation with Dr. Angela Chester. Well, listeners, I'm excited because it's February, it's Valentine's, it's all about love. But today, we're going to talk about self-care with returning guest expert, Dr. Angela Chester. Hello, Dr. Angela. Hello, Janet. Thank you so much for having me on today. I am so excited because, you know, we got a lot to pack in during our little conversation. So the first thing I want to talk about is what made you decide to write a self-care journal? Well, you know, there were a lot of things that that motivated me. But the number one thing, if I can speak frankly, is COVID-19, right? We are all still dealing with 
the fact that we're in a pandemic, even though depending on what state you live in uh, and how you are dealing with that, be it that you are trying to stay home more or your children are in school, out of school, whatever, right? Your parents, your loved ones, whatever. We're still dealing with a virus. But the one thing that we can control is what we do within our own space and how we do what we're going to do. And we need a way to remind ourselves that though the world may not be the way that we want it to be right now, we can still take care of ourselves and still try to keep ourselves in the best possible headspace that we can possibly keep ourselves in. So, Dr. Angela, with that, what are the benefits that you find? And self-care, because sometimes people, they talk about, it, they throw the term around, but I don't think people really understand like those benefits of self-care. Absolutely. And that's a good question. To me, self-care is taking care of the self, the total and complete package of who you are. So that's mind, body, spirit, right? So self-care is not just uh, taking a bubble bath, though it is that. It is not just reading the book though it is that. Self-care is not just those um, kind of tangible or commercial things that we think of. It is every bit and piece of how can I make sure that I am pouring into myself. So many times we think of taking care of someone else and how do we take care of them? We love them. We make sure they're okay uh, emotionally, spiritually, financially, right? All of these types of things. Well, when it comes to self-care, we're just kind of turning that onto ourselves and making sure that we are not pouring from an empty vessel. So if we understand that uh, God has given us life and given it to us more abundantly, that means that we are running over, right? Our cup runneth over. So if our cup is running over, that means that we are in a very good space. But when it's down to the E, you know, if the light has come on, then then we need to start pouring back into ourselves and doing those things that allow us to charge our own bodies. I'd like to say it, let me say it this way, just in case someone is listening, perhaps they're not a Christian. Um, When you're on a plane and the flight attendant comes up and tells you, you know, these are the things that you need to do. These are the things you don't need to do. Should there be an incident and the oxygen mask drops down, you know, put on yours first, and then take care of the person next to you. That is self-care. You have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself first so that you can take care of the person next to you, whomever that person is, a family, friend, or stranger. We have to make sure that that we um, have enough oxygen to keep moving forward. So with that, Dr. Angela, for somebody who's listening who may be thinking, okay, I understand what she's saying, but how do I do it? Because I talk to a lot of women and they just seem stuck when it comes to self-care. It's like it's foreign. They don't know what to do. And I said, sometimes you could just sit in a chair and not do anything. And that could be self-care because you're so busy working and tending to the family. And you also tend to relatives, you know, just making sure they're yeah. safe. So what, what are some, maybe like a couple of things somebody can do is like, I want to do this, but how do I get started? Absolutely. I have to comment on what you said. Sometimes doing the nothing is the self-care because I'm kind of guilty of that. Uh, Being a solopreneur, I don't just do 40 hours a week. (laughs) I wish, you know, I I have to put in many more hours than that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes in order to have the most productive week that, that I possibly need for that particular time or project or whatever. So sometimes the doing nothing is the care. But if you're having a hard time, deciding how do you how do you do this how do you step out um, one of the first things i can say is is give yourself permission so many of us do not feel that we have permission to take care of ourselves because people have said things like well who do you think you are you think a lot of yourself oh my look at right like those types of things everyone has that mother that auntie that grandmother whomever that has tried to put them in their place um, and remind them that they are not special so first of all give yourself permission because guess what you are special we need you in the world to be you so give yourself permission to love yourself second i would say is once you're there 
and you've given yourself permission, you are doing whatever you have decided is going to be your self-care moment. Be in that moment. Be present, as we would say, right? Many times we are so busy doing something else in the moment, right? So if we go to the parade or we go to the amusement park with our children, we're so busy on our phones trying to capture the moment that we forget to be in the moment. So be in the moment, right? You can do the, you can take the pictures and do all the selfies with you and your girls, getting your toes done, Manny petty day, right? That's a great self-care moment, but make sure that you're in the moment, that you take a, a second to sit back, relax, enjoy the warm water, enjoy the pampering, and then get your selfie in, right? So be present in the moment. The other thing I would say is, um, is to, remember the feeling itself what does it what does this feel like right so when I talk about achieving your dreams or walking in your purpose or how to better yourself breaking habits all of those things one of the things that I mentioned is is that when you get it right when you hit a sweet spot it feels different than it does when something is going wrong when you're having a great day you feel better right? When you're having a great time at the amusement park, you feel better. When you're eating properly, you feel better. So our minds are going to say, oh, I like this. You like this? I like this too. Do we want more of this? Yes, we want more of this. So that you can then do whatever it is that you need to do. So when you when you get to that moment where you're like, mm-mm, I'm running out of feeling good. I'm now starting to feel poorly. I'm now starting to feel bad. Uh, I I need to have a self-care day. We're able to gauge or kind of guide ourselves um, as far as where we are in our our day-to-day. I'm so glad you said it about being in the moment because my self-care once a month is, you know, I do the spa day, I get the massage, but Mm -hmm. I'm in the moment because I turn my cell phone off so I don't hear it. And I also don't have like an appointment scheduled right after. Usually right after, I may hang Mm -hmm. around the spa a little bit because, you know, I've known the spa owner since I was five. We were neighbors on the same block. But also there's a friend who lives in that neighborhood. So I always make it a point just to kind of stop by and see her. So it's kind of like I that's my entire day and then I come home and I relax. So I love the way you said be in the moment because sometimes people schedule those spy days like any other appointment. They schedule and then the next thing you know, they're going (laughs) on to something else. And I'm like, you're defeating the purpose of the spy day. So absolutely, absolutely. Don't don't rush. Don't rush through that. Because that spa day, that self-care day is just as important as any appointment. That's why you made it in the first place, because you need to be able to recharge. We, we wouldn't let our phones die. We think about that. We panic, right? When, when we get that little alert that tells us whatever stage you put it at, 25, 30%, whatever, that you need to plug in, we start surveying the room. Excuse me, I need an outlet. Who has a charger? I need to, I need to go to my car. I mean, it is, <laughs> the, the yellow light starts flashing, right? I need to get it. And heaven forbid, if it dips down below 10%, we are ready to just leave mama at the store because we need to run to charge in our phones. But yet, there are still people that think, that self-care is selfish. So I have to um, reiterate, self-care is not selfish. If you do not take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of someone else? If you do not love yourself, how are you going to love someone else? That is so good. And you are so right, Dr. Angela. We do panic. We're like, uh-oh, where's the outlet? <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking to me. I can't do this right now. I need to do charge in my phone. And heaven forbid, if you have an iPhone, you know, um, we tend to keep chargers uh, in our purse, in our car, because um, unless there's someone else that has an iPhone, you can't just use any old charger. So um <laughs> I know that I have a charger anywhere that I could possibly be just for, for that, that very reason. So absolutely. So Dr. Angela, what's one thing you do for your self-care for you? Oh, wow. Okay. One thing that I absolutely positively do is in the morning, I have my prayer meditation affirmation 
time, right? So people have heard me tell the story that I'm a breast cancer survivor and I kind of get, I won't tell that long story, but I'm a breast cancer survivor. And the, the day that I woke up from surgery, like from the anesthesia, I realized like, oh, I'm alive. Praise the Lord, right? Like I made it. Well, the next day when I woke up from having sleep, I said, oh, good morning, God. Thank you, right? And it was in that awareness that not only did I make it through the surgery, but I've made it overnight. Okay, now we're on to something, right? I have this second chance at life. I'm, I need to do X, Y, and Z to make sure that I'm my best me. With that being said, I have taken that moment and parlayed that into um, all of these now dub it, double digit number of years of being cancer free and being thankful. So my morning routine is saying, and, and I know, realize different people use different ways of describing that, but I have a morning prayer, that conversation with God. I have that meditation, that affirmation. This is what we're going to do. I'm so happy and grateful for, right? Starting my day with an attitude of gratitude, because when we're grateful for even the slightest thing, it changes our perspective. It shifts the paradigm. It erases some of the negativity and makes room for the positivity. So if I'm going to tell others how to be positive, how to be uplifting, how to enjoy life, then it has to first start with me. So good morning, God. Thank you for waking me up, right? Nice and simple. I'm not trying to be Shakespearean about it. Um, God knows my heart. We don't talk like that. We just speak from our heart. Thank you, God, for waking me up. What would you have me do today? I pause. If I hear anything, great. If I don't, then I move on. I have an attitude of gratitude. Today, I'm going to be my best me. Today, I'm going to be better than I was yesterday. No one is my competition, but everyone is my friend. I expect for today to be a good day because you have promised me that I am the head and not the tail, that I am covered both in and out. No matter where I go, I will be a shining light for the Lord. And that's my perspective, right? So, for someone who's saying, well, I'm not all into that spirituality stuff or, you know, me and God are kind of having a disagreement right now. Okay, I understand. With that being said, you can still be your best self. You can still say today is going to be a great day. Today is going to be amazing because I'm going to put my best foot forward. The affirmation of knowing that I am going to operate from a position of uh, divine grace. I am operating from the position of oneness with all that is around me. When you can look at your fellow human being and say, um, uh, using universal language, the God in me sees the God in you. Therefore, I will see you uh, with loving and kind eyes. When we understand that, and we operate from that moment, then um, I think that that makes for a better day. So that's my self-care and just trying to keep my mind right with all that I have to do. And I truly understand it because I have my grateful jar and every single day I make sure I write something down and I put it in that jar. So yes, yeah. I have seen that you posted that on social media yeah. and I said, yeah. oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked that. And I said, you know what? I, I think more people need to see need to see that if I was able to retweet that or share that, I'm pretty sure I did because that is a great idea. Yeah. And like you said, it's all part of self-care because it's all part of that self-love. And when you do the self-love, then you just kind of exude love to everyone else. So mm -hmm. thank you, Dr. Angela. So Dr. Angela, how can people connect with you? Oh, thank you so much for that question. Um, I tried to make it as simple as I possibly could. My website is drangelachester.com. So drangelachester.com. And I am on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I am on social media at Dr. Angela Chester, Dr. Angela Chester. So if it's a platform, I'm there. I'm not on WhatsApp and I'm not on Snapchat, but all the rest uh, I am on. And of course, listeners, I'll have a direct link to Dr. Angela Chester's website, but I'll also have a direct link so you can get her self-care journal as well. You can purchase it. So Dr. Angela, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Janet. So was that an informative conversation I had with Dr. Angela Chester regarding self-care? I hope after 
hearing that conversation, you will begin to really make self-care a part of your regular routine. So now I'm going to share with you some tips from Taylor's Tip Time, and it's around the topic of self-care. Make sure you purge your bathroom so that there are only items you love and use in this space. Let's create our own home spa, ladies. Decide, number two, what makes you feel good, regenerates you, relaxes you, that will be a part of your routine. You know, Dr. Angela shared how being, you know, just that gratefulness and that gratefulness space. It could be reading. It could be just meditation. It could be prayer. It could be just being quiet. Number three, schedule time for the activity. Now, of course, you know, at once a week, I just go in my bathroom and I take a, a hot, hot bath. And that really kind of just starts my week because in that moment, I don't have to worry about being someplace. So I can stay in there as long as I want. So schedule your activity, you know, schedule something small weekly, but then monthly I do my spa days. Create number four, a relaxing time and, you know, do something fun afterwards. As I shared with Dr. Angela, when I had my spa days, that's my day. That whole day is mine. So I do my spa day. I don't rush necessarily out of the spa because, you know, I've known the spa owner since I was five. She's younger than me. So since I was five, we were neighbors across the street playing back and forth. So that's my moment just to kind of reconnect. And of course, you know, she's got, I mean, at this time we're living in, her place is not as, you know, she doesn't have as many clients in there like she, you know, would normally pre-cope. So there may be one or two of us in there. And so it gives me time to just sit, relax. Then from there, there's a, a, a friend who was a former neighbor who lives a few blocks and that is always my time just to see her. You know, she's single, lives alone like I am. So that allows me in this time to really stay connected with somebody and to do it safely. And number five, make sure that when you are done a session, you are already are booking your next session. You're not saying, oh, I'm going to come back. No, you book your next session. So those are some tips in my Taylor's Tip Time in regards to self-care. Have you been working on getting organized and feel overwhelmed? Are you challenged by managing your time between work and home and life? Do you want to organize your life? Let's talk so I can help you. I work with clients to guide them from start to finish by providing them with details needed to clear the clutter and get organized without feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Go to my contact page, schedule a free 15-minute session. In addition, I offer a variety of virtual coaching plans to meet your needs. Take the steps necessary to create the life you want and start doing it today. So click the link in the show page. Now, I just want to take a big, huge and just moment and say thank you. Thank you for following me on social media, for your likes, your retweets, for your sharing, for your comments. Please continue to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, as well as Pinterest. And I have a board specifically for the bathroom, so you can go there and get some organizing ideas, or maybe just some ideas on how to create your own beautiful spotlight bathroom. And of course, be sure to follow me on YouTube as well. Now, If you're thinking of getting organized, don't get overwhelmed. Join the Facebook group, Living Life Totally Organized. It's a community of just women, women only, supporting each other on their journey to living a life that is totally organized. It's free. Join today. We have started our weekly challenges, which are really fun. And in addition, I do, you know, monthly lives and of course, topic came up because when I do a Facebook live it's so wonderful but I don't get to interact so I just put it out there in a group like look we want to see you on zoom so we do that now um also it's a great place because people post the women post their frustrations they post a picture or video and then to their surprise I actually come back on sometimes a lot quicker than they expected and I give them feedback on that space Because, you know, I know you want to make your space your own. You want to feel comfortable. You want to feel relaxed. You want to feel organized. 
which is why I created this group so that you will know you're not alone and you will be in a community of women. They're supporting each other. When someone shows before and after because they've taken on a project, people will chime in. That looks great. Go ahead. You know, give them virtual hand claps and high fives. So it's a great space. I just wanted to kind of share that with you. Being that today is Valentine's Day because sometimes you need to be surrounded by love. So, you know what time it is? Do you have a little dance you do, a jig, or a movement? It is Toss It Tuesday. And today, I want you to go in your bathroom. Go under that cabinet. Go in those baskets. Go in that medicine cabinet and get rid of stuff you will not use again. My app suggestion for this week is Calm we're talking about self-care and you know maybe you're having your self-care moment whether it's in the bathroom or in the middle of the living room you know you can use calm just to kind of keep you in that space of relaxation my product suggestion for the week is to check out the products that are available on my amazon shop in the bathroom section you know there's so many ways you can not only organize your bathroom but make it look like your personal spa my repurpose suggestion for this week is someone used an old grandfather clock and they use it for toilet paper storage there are a lot of time you know depending on the space in your bathroom you can take a piece of furniture put it in there and use it for storage it looks decorative it looks beautiful and things are accessible and if you've already done that please post it on social media and tag me my book selection for this week is as you you know, heard in my conversation with Dr. Angela, she has a self-care journal and I am encouraging you to purchase it. So there will be a link in the show page for that. And my quote for you this week is, the relationship with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you have. Jane Travis, again, the relationship with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you have. Well, I want to thank you for listening and be sure to share this podcast with your family, your friends, and on your social media network. And again, let me know you enjoy listening to this podcast by leaving a review and be sure to visit my website at www.JanetMTaylor.com. And until next time, I want you to have a clutter-free day, but most of all, have an organized week. Organization is a quintessential element of a clutter-free life. Join me as we take this journey together. Along the way, we will find the necessary answers to your organizing dilemmas. My name is Janet M. Taylor, and you are listening to Got Clutter? Get Organized.